right. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is uh, Andy Filipovich. I am on the site known as Z1720. Um, and one of the things that I do on the site is edit the on this day template that appears on the main page. So what is OTD or on this day? It is one um, of the sections on the main page and it has two parts to it. Uh, the first one is an event that have happened on that calendar day. And the second one is people who were born and died on that calendar date. So um, why is OTD important? Uh, so this is a, reader, a reason why readers and future editors check Wikipedia every single day. There are some people who just go on just to see what um, dates happen on there, um, especially ones that maybe it's their birthday that day. They want to see what else has happened. Uh, they'll go on and see what's been featured. Um, and it's also a great way to highlight some of Wikipedia's best sourced articles because um, those that are poorly sourced can't be featured on there. So it allows um, Wikipedia to showcase what those articles could look like. So I'm going to give you an example of an article that has been featured on On This Day, and it was featured for two years um, in a row. So this was an article that I wrote, Abishabbos, is a uh, religious leader from the 1800s who is indigenous. And before I started working on the article, it had maybe 30 views a month. And after I expanded the article, um, it had maybe 50 views a month. And when it was featured on, on this day, um, you can see that small little blip that goes on there. We had the TFA, which had a large blip. And then you had on this day, it got featured again the following year, um, has that small blip again. Um, but, um, so, but the blips are about... 3,735 views on 20, uh, 2023 when it was uh, on this day. And then the TFA, it was uh, 38,000, which is actually quite low. Um, the 3,500-ish is about average for an article that gets featured on, on this day. And I checked it when it was um, on the main page for Did You Know? And it had 11,000, but that was really an exception. Usually, Did You Know articles don't really have that amount. Um, and that's probably because it got featured in the quirky book slot. So those of you who know, did you know, it's the last slot usually gets more use on there. Um, and also um, making an article, a featured article is a lot harder. Um, trying to get it onto on this day is a lot easier and a really great entry point to have um, a person get their article um, featured on the main page that they might not otherwise have access to. Um, so where do we find on this day? Um, you can find the actual project at uh, WP colon OTD, um, or if you go to Wikipedia, so I'm gonna go onto the main page and you go to the on this day section, which is in the bottom right-hand corner, and you click on the archive button, there is the page and it actually pops up right into October. Let me go back to the presentation. Not sure which, oh gosh, gotta figure out which tab it is. This is. Here we go. Um, so there it is. Um, this is from yesterday's. Uh, it's bottom right hand corner. And then you can see the template here. It's got the two parts. The top are the blurbs. Well, the very top is any sort of holidays that appear on that day. So apparently October 4th is cinnamon roll day in Swinland and Finland. Um, and then you have um, between four to six books or blurbs that appear. Um, in bullet points, where one of the articles at least is the bolded or the one that we focus on, the one that we want them to click on from that uh, book. And then at the bottom there, we get four people who were either born or died on that day. Uh, so criteria, to have a hook or to have a blurb on featured on on this day. Um, the article, the bolded article, cannot be a stub, so it has to be at least 1,500 characters. Um, the article is properly cited, so there's usually about one citation per paragraph, although on this day is not as strict as Did You Know or TFA. Um, I have run articles that have had a couple of places that need citations, and nobody yelled at me. I've had a couple articles where there was one missing fact, and it became a whole big thing. Um, it just really depends on how people feel, but I try to select the ones that have less citation issues. Um, the date of the event has to be mentioned and cited in the article. That's super important because we need to be able to verify that it actually did happen on that day. And then the article has, we try not to have the article been featured on the main page in the past year. Of course, we've made mistakes. Abishabbos got 
been uh, featured in 2023 when he died and then got TFA and then got featured again the next year as no one changed the template. Um, so probably not going to appear on the main page for a while. So what can blurbs include? It can include major battles that happened, a signing of a treaty, an expedition setting sail. We have a discovery of a new periodic element. Um, a major performance took place, like um, recently the um, first performance of Mozart's Madame Butterfly was featured. Um, I think it was Madame Butter Butterfly. It was one of Mozart's uh, performances. Um, a recipient getting a major award. So um, we, um, the first Black actress to get an Academy Award is one of the possible blurbs for February 29th. Unfortunately, it's ineligible. We're going to talk about that a little bit later, but um, that's something we can feature on there. Or the first person to win an award or something significant about um, that person winning it. A natural disaster can be uh, featured as a blurb. So earthquake happened, um, caused major damage in Armenia. The article has no major problems. It's not a stub. We can put it on this day, especially because the earthquake probably only happened only over one day. Makes it very easy to put on there. Um, a terrorist attack or any sort of civil unrest, any sort of thing that happened. Um, that it gets its own article. Uh, so the common blurbs or the hooks that we get on on this day, um, we get a lot of American events. We get a lot of British events. Uh, we get a lot of American events about the Civil War. Um, and we don't want to feature a Civil War hook every single day because then OTD gets yelled at. So we try to vary stuff up. Um, same thing with British events that have to do with wars that took place with something with Napoleon. Those get a lot of stuff in there. Um, Warfare, battles, start of a conflict, anything to do with war. There's always a bunch of those. Um, sometimes I've got six possible hooks that I can select and five of them have to do with a war. And I'm like, well, this is not a variety. Um, terrorist attacks um, or any sort of those major events, especially stuff that's happened more recent, um, tend to get featured on there. Um, natural disasters also get a bunch of featured. Um, earthquakes, um, major floods, things like that. Um, but not cyclones. Cyclones are very hard to put on on this day because the date that it is formed and the day it becomes a hurricane or major cyclone can be two different dates. And then the day that it lands on land shore and um, causes a bunch of destruction can be also a different date. And if I'm skimming an article because the template is going to update in five hours, I am not going to try to figure out which date to put it on. Um, so I disregard it. Um, so if you know of some cyclones that have caused major damage and can add to OTD, that would make my life significantly easier. Um, events from the 1900s. We love to put events from the 1900s on there, especially World War I, especially World War II. Um, so many World War II articles. Um, so, and we try to vary it up. It, it's very difficult trying to find articles pre-1800 because then it becomes a lot harder to have stuff figuring out when it happened, especially things that happened in North America, South America, especially things that happened in um, Polynesia or in Australia or New Zealand, because um, those cultures did not tend to keep track of things on specific dates. It was more about oral storytelling and it wasn't quite as important. Europeans and um, some East Asian cultures very much um, kept track of dates of when things happened. And so it's easier for us to verify that it happened on that date. Um, so then we, we skip over to the 1900s where we're keeping a lot better records of when things are happening on certain dates. We're able to pull a lot more events from around the world. Uh, yeah, I see a question over here and I'm gonna put the microphone because there might be some people online who also want to listen to it. Um, so for 1800 events, which you are speaking about, um, um, you know, not much records. How about uh, primary information or uh, government uh, documents like um, Indigenous Services Canada? You know, they have so many letters or National Council of Truth and Reconciliation. Yeah, excellent question. So we, it is possible that we could get some of those records that are there. Um, the people that are keeping those records were the colonists coming in there. So we've already got a bias on who is making those records. Did they think it was important enough for it to write it down? So I'll give you the example of Abba Shabbos. We don't know when he was born. We know when he died because he was arrested, thrown in jail, and they were keeping records of him because they didn't like the activities that he was doing. So 
the reason why we know when he died is because of the colonists. Um, when we're looking at events that took place in the 1800s, we have a lot less cultures that are keeping track of the dates that things are happening. European um, uh, countries and European government systems were keeping track of them. Um, other ones were not. We also have the problem of records got destroyed. So in Eastern Europe, um, during World War II, um, when um, when Nazis came in into uh, into those countries, they destroyed a lot of records that were being kept for Jewish culture. So we we just don't know. Like we might know that they happened. Can we find the exact date? If we can't say for sure that something happened on July 9th, we can't feature it on that date, and therefore it gets it becomes ineligible to be on there. Um, it can be featured in other places, like uh, for on today's featured article or on Did You Know? But for on this day, it, it can't be featured unless we know the exact date. Um, the uh, the last one is that's a very common one is airplane crashes. I think there was an editor who loved creating airplane crashes and used the records from there. And so if I ever need a hook that is not for warfare, like that is an excellent one that I pulled from. But again, I can't feature it every single day. But um, so at the top are the hooks that were the bullet points that have a specific year attached to them. And then underneath were the um, biographies of people. So um, that were either born or died on that date. And then criteria to have a person listed there is the article is not a stub. It's properly cited. Um, their birthday or death date is mentioned in the article and cited. This is the big one. There will be featured articles and good articles and I will want to put them on on this day. And the birthday will be in the lead and it will never be cited anywhere in the article. It'll say, <laughs> this person was born in Connecticut. And I'm like, great, what day? I go click on that citation to see maybe it has in the biography the day that they were born and it was not put in there. So I can't use it because I can't verify it. Um, so if you are writing an article, please like don't just put in the lead unsighted or in the, the info box unsighted. Like, the first line, person was born on this date and like name the date and the year makes my life a lot easier. Um, and then the article um, should not have been featured on the main page in the past year. Um, some possible entries that you can have are major politicians like presidents, prime ministers, leaders of a country. Um, typically, we uh, on this day doesn't like to have those that are on the subnational level like governors or politicians of that way because they, they're not as, they're not the highest of the notability. And we've only got four slots. Like having a governor of, of um, Kentucky is maybe not the best slot when we could have featured the president of Bolivia, for example. So we would try to create the national um, position. Uh, royalty, um, anybody, excuse me, anybody who's of royalty. But again, we're looking for like kings, queens, princesses, not like random by by dukes for or by counts or whatever from 1700s it's a little bit more difficult um major pop stars so like people that most um that are very big or have been like very successful internationally um pop athletes so not the random player who played for two years for the toronto maple leafs and then played a total of three games that's a little lesser there you would want to have like hit the top of their peak, like Wayne Gretzky or Sidney Crosby would work out really well. Yes, I'm Canada. I am going to represent hockey. Um, Nobel Prize winners is, is excellent one. Um, generals, um, major religious figures. So they started their own religion. Um, <laughs> and then uh, famous, well-known people. Um, so that would be easily recognizable. So um, we had Clarence Thomas, who was... Um, uh, on this day a couple of days ago. Um, some common ones we have are, again, American and British people overrepresented. This is directly reflective of the people who have written articles on English Wikipedia, which tend to be Americans and British, and they are writing articles that are of interest to them. Huge overrepresentation of those groups of people. Um, royalty is overrepresented and politicians, because um, it's very easy to find information about them, especially those who are from Europe. Um, People who were born in the 1900s, um, because it's easier for us to find a lot of information about them. Um, you know, if they're born in the 2000s, um, they might not be notable yet. So we have less articles about those. Um, but 
born in the 1900s, they've had enough time to build up their notability and uh, they get overrepresented. And Christian figures, anybody who is somehow related to Christianity, we have a lot of saints. We have a lot of um, we have a lot of people who are from the structural organization of the Catholic Church. It kind of makes sense because if we're looking for people who were born or died before the 1900s, Catholic Church was very good about keeping records. They also kept records of when they died so that they could become saints. Now we've got verification of somebody who died in the 1700s, and now I, I want to pull that out because I've got nothing else. So uh, what on this day needs is more blurbs from underrepresented regions like South America, indigenous North American blurbs, um, blurbs from Africa, um, especially ones from underrepresented cultures. There are a couple of ancient Egypt or Egyptology um, blurbs, you know, finding a major tomb or um, you know, something with Egyptian, um, ancient Egypt history. But then if we're looking for um, blurbs about um, major conflict that happened in Africa in the 1800s, it's hard to find a blurb for that. Um, Middle Eastern, um, especially ones that are not from the past um, uh, like 50 years for major conflicts because of um, Israel and uh, Palestine or any sort of Israel conflict. We like to expand out from there. And also probably now is not a good time to talk about um, conflicts that happened with Israel and uh, Palestine on, on this day. Um, so we're trying to steer away from that. Um, Inner Asia or Eurasia. So thinking about things that happened in you know Turkmenistan or um, Inner Mongolia, um, Polynesian countries, um, and non-English speaking countries in general. Um, we need more blurs from underrepresented topics like the arts, uh, science, engineering and architecture, food and drinks, sports and recreation that is not cricket or association football. We have a lot of those. <laughs> it's, um, I would love to try to feature one every single day, but again, we would get yelled at. And uh, video games is very popular on English Wikipedia, does not have a lot of blurbs from video games. And I think because the fear was that um, it was such a niche topic, quote unquote, that talking about a major video game being released that people wouldn't really care about it. But I think that if a video game is considered really um, a major milestone in video game production, that it should probably be on this day or at least be considered as an option. Um, another one that I did was um, I did one on the arts where I talked about The Little Mermaid being released because it was a good article. And I was able to talk about that being the beginning of the Disney Renaissance. Um, that was a very popular article because people were able to relate to Little Mermaid, but also like an underrepresented group on there because of what's the place. Uh, we need more biographies from underrepresented regions, just like before Asia, uh, uh, Oceania, Africa, South America, the Caribbean. Eastern Europe, indigenous North American, basically like not American, not British, um, not colonial white people from Canada from the 1900s, um, just trying to get that variety that's in there. Um, and we need more biographies from underrepresented topics like the science, engineering, food and drinks, sports and recreation that's not cricket or association, football, video games, um, religious figures that are not Christian, especially Catholic, video games, um, and just trying to move away from the warfare hooks, moving away from um, uh, sports hooks from association football and towards more variety. Um, so how do we find more articles for on this day? Um, if it was recently posted on Did You Know or in the news, it is probably eligible for on this day as long as there's a date attached to it. Um, especially for in the news, if it happened on a certain date, it'll be in the article. Put that into the template for the following year, and now it can be considered. Um, if it's on Did You Know, it, they have much stricter rules of appearing on the main page. Um, as soon as you get your article on Did You Know appearing on the screen, put it onto the date that it gets recognized. Even if it's not for the following year, it'll still be in the template forever, and it will be used again and again. Um, good articles and featured articles. Hopefully, if they've continued their standards, um, they can get featured on On This Day. Um, Recent good article nominees and featured article candidates, even if they're unsuccessful, um, they probably fulfilled the citation requirements. And then articles you recently edited. So you created the article, even if you didn't get it into good article status, you put the proper citations in there, go add it into on this day. And so 
how do you add it? So when you go on to, on this day, you're gonna click on the month, which is at the very top. You'll add, uh, click on the date that you wanna add it to. <laughs> if the date is on the main page or is gonna be tomorrow's, um, only administrators will be able to edit it. This is because we don't want random editors adding in random blurbs that vandalize or uh, appear on the main page. Um, so if that's the case, then you can put it on the talk page or just wait a day or two for it to open back up again. A bot uh, uh, protects the page and then uh, unprotects the page automatically. Um, so once you click on the date, there's going to be an open staging area and you're going to add your article into the eligible section. Do not add it directly into the template. So when somebody is swapping the hooks on that date, they assume that the ones that are in the template were the ones that were used in the previous years. So some people would have added a hook into there. And then I say, oh, I think it was used last year. I'm not going to use it again because we want to rotate out all the hooks and it loses a year that it could be um, eligible. Um, and then you want to add it into the eligible section. Um, and this means that it can be featured um, into the template the following year. And don't worry about you adding your own articles. Um, a swapper or somebody who's going to be changing around the hooks will figure out if the article is still eligible and will move it down themselves. So we really encourage you to add your own articles into the eligible section. Um, it's deemed ineligible if there's too much unsighted text. If there's an orange banner anywhere in the article, the ones that say like, this needs more references. This only uses primary sources. This needs a huge copy edit. Um, if there's a banner, we'll just automatically disqualify it um, if the article is too short or if the fact the birth date or the death date is unsighted. So we also, uh, I'll show you onto the site where you can actually, um, sorry. Yeah, I'm just gonna ask you what the, Shortcut is to get um, uh, WP colon OTD. That'll take you here. There you go. There's a shortcut. So I'm on the page. I've got the months that are listed here. Let's say I want to add one to, um, let's say March 28th, because I picked on that here. So I clicked on the month and then click on the date at the top. So this is what a sample page would look like. There's a huge warning text at the top that I've never actually read. Um, <laughs> it's too long and I don't know how to change it. Um, and then there's a staging area or eligible area. You'll press show. And then I've got the pictures at the top that can be used. I've got the ineligible ones up top. Um, another problem that happens is when an article gets put into ineligible, sometimes it stays there forever, even if somebody fixes it up. So if you fix up an article um, from this list, move it back down to eligible. If somebody else comes along and says, no, it still needs to go back to ineligible, they'll move it back up themselves. Uh, we'd rather have the article get moved back and forth rather than just sticking around and not doing anything. Um, then you have the eligible ones that are down below. So these are the ones that I'm going to try to pick from the next time I swap the hooks. Now you can see that there is six options here. So if I want to have a complete set next year, I have to hope that all uh, five out of the six of these are going to be usable as an editor might've come along in the past year and added in unsighted text um, or taken out the fact that has been listed there or caused a problem. I also have to hope that these are all from different places from around the world and that they all don't have to do with warfare. Um, and then if it does, then I might have to reuse one from down below. Um, in fact, there have been some dates where I had six options in total, and I had to hope that um, I didn't have two of the articles that couldn't be used, or I had to go hunting for sometimes an hour or two, trying to find any other hook that I could put in place. Um, so that's why we want you to add in the hooks that yourself, because it makes my life easier. Um, so, um, and then same thing for down below here for the born and died added um, into the template down below. Don't worry about the text being perfect for the blurb. Um, don't worry about, oh, did I do it right? Or things like that. People who are swapping the hooks later on who have a lot more experience will come along and fix it up or like make the hook more punchy. Just put it in there and we'll get it going later. Um, don't worry about spelling or grammar either. Um, there are people who are much better at that than me who copy edit 
um, the templates um, before they run every single day. Every day. Uh, every single day there's been somebody that, or the past little while there has been um, two editors specifically that have been doing a lot of it um, and fixing up like the, you know, the like really picky grammar rules and like, do you have a comma after United States when you like mention like Indianapolis, United States, like they will make sure that all that stuff is put in place. Um, and so back to the presentation. So we also need people to swap the hooks um, because if no one swaps the hooks, then we just reuse the ones from the previous year. Um, and then we don't get as much variety on the main page. Um, so anybody can go and swap the hooks, especially if they're from the eligible section. Um, except if the data is on the main page or if it's going to be there the subsequent day because they've been page protected, only if you don't change those. <laughs> but if you're two days ahead of time, um, go ahead and swap the hooks. Um, and um, we try to do it. The goal is two weeks ahead of time. The reality is we're lucky if we get it done like 12 hours before. Um, so please go in and change them up. Um, things to keep in mind if you are choosing to swap the hooks, um, you want article variety. So no five or like you don't want five articles about warfare, change up topics, um, have a variety of different dates. So don't have five hooks that are from the 1900s. Try to have some like a little bit, one from the 1800s, um, three from the 1900s and one from the 2000s or one from like year 673. Like that's perfect. You got something um, different in there. And then also look at the length. You don't want to have five hooks that are really, really long. Uh, that's boring to the reader. Kind of change it up if you can. Um, one hook has a picture that is um, accompanying it. So going back to the main page today, we've got this coin. That's the seal of auto the fourth. Um, so you see here that this one's from the 1209 um, hook where from the Holy Roman Empire and it says seal picture. So one of the hooks has to have a picture that goes along with it. Um, this is for reader interest. Uh, oops, oh gosh, just move that over. Um, when was the last time it was on the main page and will the article be that feature article or feature picture or on this day? So we try not to have it going in there. We have a tool forge that was created by Lego last year that I like to use. Um, I won't go over it because I am nearing the end of my time and I want to leave time for questions. Um, but Wikidata can also help you find those articles um, that you want. So if you go on, um, if you go to OTD, uh, and if you scroll to the bottom, there are these um, links to um, feature articles or good articles for these dates. So if I click on birth date and death date, fill it in for uh, today, today's the fourth. Today's the, yeah, today's the fourth. So this is going to send a query for October 4th, and it is going to return back all good and featured articles where the person is either born or died on October 4th. Um, some of them will be wrong. You'll click on the article and it will not be October 4th. Um, so this one is like October slash November, they died. This wouldn't be usable, so you have to check it afterwards. And then, um, I already talked about tips for adding hooks. That's the tool Forge. Um, we also need help for saving those ineligible articles. Please make them eligible again by adding citations. I added a list of dates, and I went through one at a time of the ones that um, we definitely need more hooks for. And I'll leave it at that because I think we're. Um, nearing the end of our time. Does anybody have any quick questions for me to go through about what this process is? Go for it. Um, do you like look at like what like the AP or the New York Times, like they have their own like on this day or this yeah. day in history things. Do you ever look at those? Absolutely, day? especially if I'm looking for hooks for a date. Um, Encyclopedia Britannica also has a couple of those ones. Um, Wikipedia also has a list of things that happened on that date. Unfortunately, Wikipedia's list, most of those are not eligible to be on on this day because they don't have proper citations. So I am less likely to look at those because I spend a lot more time saying no. Um, the best thing I do when I'm trying to find dates is going into the wiki data because you can also look up for specific events of good and featured articles as they're more likely to be usable. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? Yes. Uh, what would you say is like the most boring one? The most boring month. Eventful month. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, 
<laughs> I think it's not signable. There, are, yeah, it's it's not so much most boring month, but they're like there's some dates where nothing has happened, and I'm like, how? Like, also a lot of articles like things tend to happen on the first of the month, like this country is created on this date. I'm like, cool, I can use that, and then like March 28th, like nothing has really. Who so has decided to pick that date that they want to create their country or to sign the major treaty? They, always, they want to pick like no November 11th because it's like 11 11. Like, so you, you kind of, those are the dates that we're, that we struggle with or like just the random ones that don't really have any significance. I can, I can tell you rules of places that you can find dates that are citable. So yeah. books are almost always published on a Tuesday. So everything cycles through i mean the thing is you'd have to work backwards you have to like go find the citations and then movie premieres are um either at a festival or on a friday yeah and so sometimes it's just i mean someone has to go through and do that but then those are citable and there's a lot of them yeah so it has to, like at the date yeah so movies movies are very interesting and um recent ones will know like the day that they premiered which it works out but if we didn't think the movie was going to be successful nobody has recorded the exact date it was like actually first shown so then that becomes difficult books is even more difficult because if we didn't think the book was going to be popular the publisher is just like ah we'll just print it and we'll just like send it to the bookstore it's like uh oh. trying to figure out like you know because um, anything that's in modern society the reviews of the books and the mag the books and the i mean you sometimes have to work backwards from the date but the books and movies if the reviews they they should they will they will so, uh, it'll say like yesterday you know or something or like yeah so i'm trying to oops nope not trying to that. <laughs> i mean the G great gatsby though like is going to have sure, yeah uh, yeah the modern yeah, yeah the modern ones will definitely <laughs> have like but um it's some some of the books will have the exact date yeah. some of the books they we know the month that they were first published yeah. but trying to get a citation that says it was first published on july 15th unless like sometimes that becomes a lot more difficult to put in there and it can't and now can't be used because we don't know the exact date it was out. Um, yeah. Uh, can you handle dates that are like further past historical events where it's like, we think it happened on this date, but we're only 90% sure, or maybe it's traditionally, this is the date it happened, but we're not really sure, or is it was just out? Some, so sometimes I try to sneak them in. Um, sometimes I get in trouble, sometimes I don't. There was one article where they determined the date because they mentioned that a comet appeared in the sky and another another um, culture recorded the date that that happened. I think it was a Mayan event. So we were able to say, yes, it happened on that date because the comet would appear in the sky and they did a bunch of science and they had properly cited. And that worked really well. Um, there was one that what happened in like sometime before, like sometime in BCE, um, where it said like, traditionally, this has been the date that we've said that this has happened, and that got uh, removed from the template a couple hours after it's on the main page because they said this can't be proven, um, which upset because it was from, um, I think it was from one of the Indian, uh, subcontinent Indian cultures, and I was like, that was a really good one. We don't usually get hooks from there from that time period, so we should wrap it up. Gotta, gotta wrap it up. Uh, okay, so um, I will, um, I'll try to sneak out over there if you wanna ask individual questions, but thank you so much for attending. And um, we'll rest the conference.